Okay, so in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks and kind of guide you through how to write your paper one, two, and three for an IB history examination paper. I am a recent IB graduate myself, and these are tips and tricks that my teacher shared with me and that students have been using in my school's program for years. So today I'm going to share some helpful tips about writing your paper 1, 2, and 3 for your final IB examination. Um, and this would be for an IB history examination. And if you follow these rules and use these tips, you'll end up probably with a very high score for all of these portions of your exam. Um, so I'm going to go over paper 1 first, and then paper 2 and paper 3, and kind of go in order. Um, and so for paper one, there are four parts. You will want to read the questions first and then use the documents to answer questions one, two, three, and four. So there will be four questions um, for paper one and you're gonna be referring back to um, documents that you're given. They also must use specific terms from the documents. So your answers to um, the parts in question one should not uh, repeat and they should include specific terms. So that's really all for question one. And then moving on to question two, uh, you'll be using the OPLV method to answer this question. Um, and if you don't know what this is, I'm going to explain that in a few seconds. So like I said, when answering question two, you're going to use OPLV. Uh, with specific terms or content from the document that um, they're wanting you to look at. And those specific terms need to be explained clearly. And you will want to explain the limitations and values of the document, and you may refer to outside knowledge if you'd like. And I actually recommend that you do that so that you can increase your score and show your knowledge about the given topic, um, basically beyond the, what the document has told you. Um, now I'm going to explain what exactly OPLV is and what it stands for and how you can use it to answer number two. So the O stands for origin, the P stands for purpose, the L stands for limitations, and the V stands for value. So you're going to want to structure your answer to number two around this. So you'll first state the origin, which is the O of OPLV. So you're going to state the origin of the document. Um, this means that you will need to state whether the source is primary or secondary and answer some other questions regarding its origin, such as like who created it, um, maybe like who is the author, when was it created, when was it published, who is publishing it. And you should be able to answer the origin part of the question by referencing back to the document because those things are included. So this isn't going to really require any outside um, knowledge because those things are given to you. So this is a pretty easy um, question. You just go back and look at the document for that part. Now the P stands for purpose. So next you will be answering and explaining what the purpose of the document is. And you will want to answer and um, kind of ponder questions such as, why does this document exist? Why did the author create this piece of work? What is the intent? Um, who was the author thinking would receive this? And can it tell you more than is on the surface? So the next part of the question, uh, you will want to answer the L of OPLV. And the L, like I said before, stands for limitations. And this is where you will list and point out the weaknesses of the source and answer questions like what part of the story can we not tell from this document? Um, how can we verify the content of the piece? Um, does this piece inaccurately reflect anything about the time period? Maybe what is the author leaving out and why are they leaving it out? And what is it purposely maybe not addressing? This is an important question to kind of touch on because just like today, uh, people in the past, you know, lean towards one side of an argument, uh, one side of a political spectrum, and 
we all have our own opinions when it comes to current issues, so we tend to omit things that help our cause. So lastly, you're going to answer the V part of OPLV, which is the value of the document. And you must determine, based on who wrote it, when and where it came from, um, and why it was created. Uh, and also what value does this document have as a piece of evidence. So now that we have discussed how to answer both questions 1 and 2 of paper 1, um, I'm going to talk about how to answer number 3. So for number 3, you will be comparing and contrasting uh, essentially in three sets. So you will be comparing and contrasting two sources that are given to you. So um, the exam will tell you which two sources you will be looking at, like which two documents, and you will include two similarities and one difference, or one similarity and two differences between those two documents. And you will need um, either of those to make up your set of three, so it doesn't matter how many similarities or differences that you have, just as long as you have a total of three, I guess, like, statements. Um, when you include these similarities and differences, uh, you need to remember to include specific references to the document so that there isn't a lot of confusion for the person grading your paper because that will result in a reduction of your final score. I mean, these examiners are, you know, grading a lot of other tests and paper ones, so, um, if yours is clear and concise and to the point, then they're really going to understand uh, what you're talking about and that will ultimately increase your score. Make sure for number three uh, not to include the, an OPLV for the documents because this will just take too long and it's not necessary. Um, it's only necessary for number two of paper one. Now lastly, I'm going to talk about the fourth question for paper one. And now for the fourth question, you will use all of the parts that you've already answered for paper one in this question. So you will use parts from numbers one, two, and three to answer number four. So you will want to start with a clear thesis, organize your paragraphs chronologically because you don't want to be bouncing all over the place with dates. Um, like I previously mentioned, this makes it clear and concise for the examiner, which will ultimately boost your score. And um, you will also want to have two clear body paragraphs after your clear thesis. So you want to have your clear thesis, two body paragraphs, make sure they're chronological, and you will want to add in at least four outside facts to validate or counter each document to prove your thesis. You also want to try and provide an analysis or reasons for why things happen and discuss the limitations and values that you included in question two, plus at least uh, limitations and values from one other document. So I'll explain that like a little bit more. You're going to want to use the limitations and values from number two and include a limitations and values from a third document. And lastly, you will want to reach a clear conclusion in a concluding paragraph, just like any other essay. So this part four is like a mini essay using, using questions one, two, and three from paper one to answer um, the last part, number four. And I also recommend that you bring a little bit of additional analysis of what you're talking about in the conclusion. Now before I start to discuss paper two, I want to talk about how you should split your time up while writing paper one. Um, it's recommended that you should give yourself five to seven minutes for number one, eight minutes for number two, 10 to 12 minutes for number three, and 33 to 39 minutes for number four. Um, you're giving the most time to number four because, I mean, you're writing a smaller essay and it's the biggest piece. So you're going to want to, you know, save most of your time for that writing. For paper two, you will be writing two essays. Um, so this is obviously a step up from paper one, um, where paper one was one essay and a couple small questions. Paper two will have you writing a total of two essays. Now you will start by picking the two topics that you want to write about. Um, then 
after you pick your two topics, you will outline both of them in 10 to 15 minutes. Um, you will want to create a list of events, terms, and names, uh, and like information that you feel is important in this 10 to 15 minutes. So you're outlining, creating a list of events and terms and names, um, and just general information that you feel is important so you can reference these things easily when you're writing and so that when your brain's getting all jumbled, you can look back at the list and, you know, remember what you wanted to include. Now, you don't want to waste a lot of your time outlining. So I would say once you reach the 15 minutes, you should stop outlining and begin writing, like, regardless of whether or not you finished um, your outlines. Because it is really important that you write the essays, obviously, and you want as much time as you, as you need. Um, you should write each of your essays in 40 minutes. So you will split the time between the two. So 40 minutes for essay one, 40 minutes for essay two. And now your essay should start with an intro and a thesis. And it should have two clear body paragraphs with topic sentences that match the thesis so that the essay is well organized. And of course, like I mentioned earlier in paper one, easy to follow for the grader because that boosts your score. Um... Your paragraph should also contain events in chronological order if it is possible because that helps with the flow and ability for the examiner to understand your essay. Also, I highly recommend that you explain specific terms. Like, you should explain the causation of things or compare terms within your essays. And in addition, you should compare and contrast historian views at the end of at least one paragraph. But when I was in IB, my teachers... Um, really pushed us to memorize historians and they encouraged us to actually compare and contrast historians at the end of at least two paragraphs. Um, so I really recommend that you do memorize a lot of historians in preparation for this exam. Um, for paper two, the when you're writing your essays, the last part of your essay um, should be a logical conclusion, so include um, a concluding paragraph where um, you sum up your essay, and again, you will be writing two essays, so don't forget to pick two, because there's always those people who forget that you're writing two. And now the last paper that we will be discussing is paper three. Now, paper three is the big dog of all of the IB history papers, and your hand will definitely be cramping and screaming by the end of this paper. I call it the big dog because you will be writing three essays. Now, you will want to begin paper three just as you did with paper two by picking your questions and your, you know, picking your three topics. Um, you will want to pick what you know best as quickly as you can because time is money with paper three. Now, remember to pick one question per topic heading. And after you pick your questions, you will outline all three of them just as you did in paper two. And you will give yourself 10 to 15 minutes to do these outlines with a list of events, terms, and names. These outlines will be more in-depth, and these lists of events, terms, and names will be more in-depth than paper two. Um, you will want to begin by writing the easiest essay first, and this is obviously based upon your own opinion, so write which one you know you will ace. And yes, you will ace this exam. Um. Then I advise you to write the hardest essay second and save kind of like the essay that's not the hardest but not the easiest for um, your third essay. Um, you will have around 40 to 45 minutes to write each essay and the format it should be written in um, is exactly like paper two. So the only big difference, the main difference between is just the number of essays. So in paper two, you're writing two essays. In paper three, you're writing three. And it's just a little bit more in depth. So that sums up um, the tips that I wanted to give you about writing your paper one, two, and three for an IB history examination. Um, as an IB graduate, I know that these prep times for exams can be very stressful but you've got this and you are doing more than most people are by simply watching this video and you're going to do great.